You about ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, welcome to uh, our fall 2021 Office of the Police Oversight Monitor Community Conversations. I'm Kim Neal, the Director and Police Oversight Monitor for the city. Um, we have on the line uh, Catherine Huckabee. Catherine, you want to wave? Catherine is the Deputy Police Monitor and Deputy Director for the Office of the Police Oversight Monitor. And then we have Aaron Raxdale. Aaron? And Erin is our newest addition to uh, the, uh, the department. She is our senior management analyst and handles a lot of special projects. Um, we also, who, who is not with us today, we also have uh, Nathan Benson, who is our senior policy advisor, and we have Kenneth uh, Smith, who is our policy advisor. And then we have a new addition that will be starting in a couple of weeks uh, as well. So. Our staff is getting bigger slowly, and we're happy about that. Um, and um, and again, I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, Catherine's going to go over our uh, engagement opportunities. help if I'm unmuted. Okay, so, and Kim just looks at me and doesn't see anything. Okay, so if you have a question, please um, make sure that you put it in the chat section. You can also text us on your cell, and that phone number, if you've called in, is 682-215-6412. Again, that's 682-215-6412. Um, we really want to make sure that you complete the survey that we are going to put inside the chat section for you um, once Kim is done with the presentation. That is going to be the way that we can consolidate all of the feedback together along with the questions and comments that are in the chat section so that we can compile a report for the city. You can always email us at policeoversight at fortworthtexas.com with question, comments, or concerns as well, and visit our website at fortworthtexas.gov, O-P-O-N. Is that you, Catherine, or me? You're muted. That would be you. <laughs> we're, we're just having a thing today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to talk about the history of our Office of Police Oversight Monitor. So we're gonna just spend a few minutes just giving you a little background and then we're gonna go right into the recommendation for the Community Oversight Board, which is the juicy information everybody's looking forward to hearing about. Uh, so as many of you are aware, um, in November of 2018, um, Fort Worth Task Force on Race and Culture came out with recommendations as it relates to various operations of the city. And it was really wrapped around diversity inclusion measures that the city should look at um, to ensure inclusiveness within the city of Fort Worth. And so one of the subcommittees was a criminal justice subcommittee, um, and it looked at the police department and criminal justice concerns that have been brought forth by the community. Uh, and out of uh, the recommendations, there were three. One of the three recommendations was to create a civilian review board or an alternate, alternative form of civilian oversight. And really what civilian oversight is all about is getting the community involved with policing in your community. It's a, it's a new concept for Fort Worth, but it's actually a concept that was created out of the early 1900s. Um, and so many cities have adopted some form of civilian oversight um, in Fort Worth through its Fort Worth uh, uh, Task Force on Race and Culture made a recommendation that the city of Fort Worth should move forward as well. And as you can imagine, it was due to some police shootings in the city uh, in a matter of a few years um, that many community members were concerned about. Um, and so it really is about police accountability, um, police oversight, as well as transparency um, of uh, police accountability as it relates to the community um, and encounters with the community. So 
it's really all about that and really enhancing community and police relations. So that's ultimately the goal of our office. And so what the city decided to do was to create the Office of the Police Oversight Monitor in February of 2020 by city ordinance. And our office is an office where we monitor the police department operations as applicable to encounters with citizens. So anything that um, applies to the police department as it relates to citizens and inclusiveness and diversity issues, we try to monitor those aspects of the police department. Um, one of the biggest concerns we heard from the, from the community was the complaint process when, when uh, community members file complaints against uh, the police officers. And they, and they felt that that pr process wasn't transparent enough and it wasn't accountable enough. And so those were some of the things that we dug right into at the very beginning and looked at. Um, and so one of our major roles is to monitor that complaint process. We also take complaints against the police off, uh, officers, and we also take commendations uh, for police officers. And then we monitor, we don't actually do the investigations. That's a different form of civilian oversight, and that's not the one the city chose to create. But we do monitor the investigations of the police department by its police force. And so, um, uh, we do that uh, consistently every day. That's a primary part of what we do. And then in March of 2020, we commenced, we actually opened up our doors. And it was just a co couple of weeks before actually the city shut down for COVID. Um, but we, per uh, city ordinance, were designated as a civilian oversight agency for the city of Fort Worth. Um, and our primary role is definitely to enhance that public trust in the Fort Worth Police Department. So the key components of what we do are, as I stated before, we do intake complaint and commendations, and then we review and monitor uh, investigations of uh, police officers. We also look at policies and procedures of the police department. Sometimes that's due to a complaint, and sometimes that's just looking at their policies and procedures to ensure that they are fair and equitable, um, and that we have transparency as it relates to the community members and what they know what they understand the police policies and practices to be in um, the city of Fort Worth and from a law enforcement standpoint. We analyze uh, consistently every day policies, procedures, practices, and we do best practices research um, across the country and, and sometimes outside of the country to look at what other law enforcement agencies are doing that are working um, to make it the best fit for Fort Worth. And we make those recommendations to the police department as well as to the uh, city manager and deputy city manager over the police department. Um, we, of course, like we're doing today, uh, engage in a lot of community engagement. So although we had COVID last year, um, we did a number of virtual community engagements um, across the city. I, I think it was a, a right around 250 of them um, with various stakeholders, various groups, um, that either um, uh, contacted us to do one or we actually contacted them to reach out to them. And we really, the purpose of it, because we did were shut down, was to let our community members know that we were open and ready to do business and we were ready to partner with stakeholders um, to address policing in the city of Fort Worth. Um, and in that same vein, because we were brand new, we had, did not have a website, we didn't have business cards, we didn't even have you know, we didn't even have a, a hotline. Um, and so all of last year we spent uh, creating all of those things, social media presence, as well as creating our um, information dissemination materials. So we have brochures, we have uh, cards, complaint cards that we like to give individuals so they can carry in their wallet um, if they have a concern about policing. And really, when I talk about complaints against police officers, it may not necessarily be a complaint against a police officer, but it may be a concern that you have uh, regarding something that you saw. And we may, we possibly can help resolve those concerns for you, or we can put you in contact with the right folks or mediate the actual um, issue for you, as well as community members. Um, public, from a public affairs standpoint, as I said, we, we created a social media presence, we created a website and so forth. And then we also, uh, in, in the coming year, this year and in the coming year, we'll do, you'll see our office do more ongoing reporting. Uh, frankly, when we started last year, we had two employees. 
Um, and now, as I said uh, at the beginning of this, we're increasing as we go along. So it was hard for us to accomplish all of these components with two employees, but we're we're continuing to improve day by day. And so next year, you should see more reporting from our office as it relates to the recommendations that we're issuing, as it relates to um, the reviews that we're doing, and as it relates to um, any recommendations that we're making regarding policing across the city of Fort Worth. And then some of our other, other key initiatives we'll talk about um, um, further, uh, further in the presentation, but we have some other key initiatives that we're putting, pushing forward in 2022. You're muted, Catherine. Yeah, I need more coffee or something today. So Kim has uh, covered a little bit of this, but we all know that one of the biggest challenges that sometimes we have as a city is to share all the things that we have already been able to accomplish. Um, we're so focused on getting things done for the future. So we wanna make sure that everyone is aware of what, what has already happened. And like I said, Kim already talked about some of this, but one of the things that we're most proud of is the fact that we've been able to do over 250 virtual and in-person meetings despite COVID. And that included lunch and learns and collaborative conversations and in-person summer open houses. We also were able to complete um, almost 100 community presentations, um, everything from Steer Fort Worth to Community Frontline. If, um, if you are a part of an organization and you would like to partner with us to be able to, um, to host your own community conversation, uh, please feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email at policeoversight at forthtexas.gov or put it in the chat and we'll take note of that for later. And um, we're always looking for new partners. We've also, as a team, been able to review over 800 use of force reports and we do that so that we can identify patterns and trends and then recommend changes if needed to the Fort Worth Police Department's general orders. Um, so far, we've had at least 50 complaints that have been submitted directly to our office so that we could then uh, make sure that they were forwarded on to internal affairs. And we've also been able to um, receive and address over 100 inquiries. And an inquiry is basically when someone contacts our office by phone or email, sometimes walking in um, because they're not sure if they need to file a formal complaint. They want to walk, walk through the process. They want to share some of their, their concerns or challenges. And then we let them know if that's something, if they want to be able to, to follow through on the complaint process, then we'll give them that information to do that. Sometimes people just want to talk to us and, and share some information and, and have some questions answered. We've also um, been able to attend periodic meetings with the Fort Worth executive team, which includes the chief, internal affairs, um, the patrol action, and then we monitor the Fort Worth PD's oral use of force review board, critical police incident review board, and the recruitment oral boards. As a team, it was extremely important to all of us that we um, have the right training so that we could be prepared for this and that we continue to stay on top of what is happening in and around our country. So we have uh, attended over 50 professional classes, including ride-alongs with almost every police division, the use of force, use of force analysis. Um, it's important that we continue to do that. Um, we're going to be attending a NACO conference here soon and um, to join other uh, oversight professionals from across the United States. Um, we've also conducted quite a few real talk virtual conversations with city staff. There are about 6,500 City of Fort Worth staff members that we want to hear from and we want to be able to share the same things that, that we're sharing with you today. So we, we make it a priority to reach out to them as well. Um, as a part of reviewing the use of force um, body cam video, we've been able to recommend over a dozen changes so far to Fort Worth's general orders. Some of the big ones, including making sure that um, anyone that files a formal complaint has timely notification, that there is a formal documentation documentation process for all complaints. Um, we also helped with a revision of de-escalation policy um, and the duty to report was also added to the duty to intervene mandate in the orders. And all of these things, like I said, uh, would not have been would not have happened had we not been monitoring this um, use of force body cam videos. Um, 
one of the things that that we are looking to do in the future is to make sure that um, that we are sharing with the public on a dashboard on our website all the recommendations that we have made to the general orders so that you'll know once they've been made and if they're being incorporated as well. Um, right now we are partnering with Texas A&M. Uh, we have several interns within our office and this is a, a law inter externship program that we're extremely proud of. Uh, at our most, we had four part-time interns, and they are the ones that help us by doing all of our research in the office. Um, we were very blessed to be able to have received a $21,000 grant from the Fund to Advance Racial Equity at North Texas Community, and um, that allowed us to employ two of those interns. They've done everything from benchmarking policies and procedures to um, help us with use of force and pursuit, stops, searches, body worn camera video. Most importantly, they're going to, they've been helping us draft a state of the art community police restorative justice mediation program. So the things that we're going to be working on in 2022, which is almost here, includes trying to, to get that restorative justice mediation program off the ground come January. We're also working on a Know Your Rights education campaign. That's not the formal title, but we will be, uh, be tweaking that just a bit. And we're excited about that because it's gonna be an opportunity for us to work with local school districts and other partner agencies to, um, to, to, uh, to get together police and community members, including youth and do live scenarios, which will give both sides an opportunity to view the other's perspective in a very safe, controlled environment. So we're excited about that. Um, and we've already talked about the restorative justice mediation program a bit. What we're talking about with that is an opportunity for people who do not have a complaint that that would require that would maybe end in discipline of an offer officer, but instead would be maybe um, they're concerned about a tone that an officer had with them or the way that a, a process was done when they were stopped. So we're going to be able to bring together trained mediators um, and community members who are, have gone through incidents like that and the officer that was involved. If all sides agree to come to, um, if all sides come to, um, if all sides come to, um, to an agreement and are willing to sit down and go through the mediation, then we'll bring them together and walk through that practice with them. Um, we will always continue to have additional community police collaborative sessions, and that is where we bring in the community members and um, officers from the areas in which they serve and allow them to have face-to-face -face conversations in small groups and be able to discuss policies and procedures and, and the, share their insights about what they've experienced. Um, the panel of Texas civilian oversight pr practitioners, Kim has been able to get together some additional oversight um, leaders in other cities across the state of Texas. And we're going to be bringing that to you at the beginning of the year where we bring them all together and they're going to share best practices, answer questions from the community. It's going to be a great opportunity to hear what other cities are doing in, in the field of oversight. And the 28th annual NACOL conference is, um, it is the National Association for Civilian Oversight for Law of Law Enforcement. And this is a conference that's going to come to Fort Worth. We are very excited to see them join us in the fall. And they are, again, it's going to be an opportunity for community members and leaders to join other oversight leaders and advocates from across the United States to share best practices, hear what's happening in their cities, and learn some lessons from, from each other. So just a quick reminder, if you have questions, please enter them in the chat section. And what we're gonna do is read those out at the end of the presentation. And um, if you text them to us as well, it's 682-215-6412. And the same, we'll, we'll, sh we'll share all of that at the same time. We'll either Kim or myself will answer those questions for you. Here is the link to the survey that we would love for you to participate in. It asks some open-ended questions, but also some very specific ones 
about your insights um, to to um, what to the not only this part of the presentation, but more importantly to the presentation about the board recommendation that Kim is fixing to share with you. Um, so the link is in the chat section. You can also, if you if you're done at the end of the day, you can always go and complete the survey at any time. But you can also email questions, comments, concerns to police oversight at forthtexas.gov. Okay, and now it's Kim. All right. Catherine, you said fixing. <laughs> it's Texas, Kim. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So um, now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. Um, and also, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, uh, we, we can definitely stop and answer any questions or we can hold off and answer them at the end as well. Um, so how did we get to the point of um, providing some recommendations to our city council? Um, so uh, last year, we, uh, uh, myself and the police department um, looked at uh, their general order 201.07, which uh, was created a few years back uh, under Police Chief uh, Fitzgerald, <coughs> excuse me, and it created a policy advisory committee that was appointed by the chief. It was an internal committee appointed by the chief to review policies and practices of the police department. Um, they, it was a board of community members, uh, but um, the uh, really the community and the council uh, or no other city leader had any impact on who uh, was placed on that advisory committee other than the police department. And so um, the operations of that uh, committee were suspended um, in about 2019 um, because the police department knew that um, the city would be creating civilian oversight uh, in the city of Fort Worth. And so, um, and they knew they would be creating the monitor's office. And so they suspended the operations of the committee. Um, and so what we thought we would do is, uh, frankly, uh, take that outside of the police department and create an independent police advisory committee, a policy advisory committee, and suggest that to council. Now, that was a little different than what some community members had talked about, which was uh, also looking not just at policies and procedures, but complaints as well. Um, but that was not um, the feeling that, um, that I received as far as something that would be accepted by our city leaders. And so I was trying to do the best thing we could possibly do to get a board started for the city of Fort Worth. Um, and so, from there, um, the key was it would be independent of the Fort Worth Police Department. So it would still be a civilian oversight component to it um, because it would no longer be appointed by the chief of police. Um, and the opportunity to do this would allow for open policy making um, that allows police to benefit from community input regarding police policies. And ultimately, really the key goal is to address systemic issues proactively as opposed to reactively. We don't wanna wait till we have a police incident uh, in this city um, to address policies and procedures that we could clearly address prior to and hopefully prevent some of those police incidents. So we really wanna be proactive um, and anticipate any crises that we could have later on. And so, um, in December of one, on December one of 2020, I went to the council and provided this, them this idea. And what I wanted to do was create a mutual accountability work group, which was a group of community members to discuss the proposed board. And that's what we did. Um, so the overview of that mutual accountability work group was that it would be an ad hoc group. So it's a temporary group that we put together to discuss what the proposal should look like to city council of a civilian oversight board for the city of Fort Worth. And, and that group represented diverse stakeholders in the Fort Worth community. Um, our office, as well as uh, PD, as well as city legal also were members of the group, but we were there not to, uh, to really offer recommendations as to what the proposed board should look like, but really to serve as subject matter experts and answer any questions of a civilian mutual accountability work group. Um, and the key was to reach a consensus on key considerations of what the board should look like, how it should be created. 
Uh, at the very beginning, um, it was a, uh, a, a great testament to building relational trust amongst the stakeholders of that work group. And what the, some members of the work group really wanted to emphasize to the council and to our city leaders was that even though they were looking at creating a board, uh, potentially creating a board, they would look at police policies, procedures, and practices, that they really wanted the council to actually consider adding a review of complaints to the board's, uh, to the ultimate board's purpose. Um, and so uh, that work group uh, reconvened to uh, also want the opportunity to reconvene once the draft ordinance was created, they wanted the opportunity to reconvene at a later date to discuss the draft ordinance. So this slide here represents who the, those mutual accountability work group members are. And for sake of folks on the phone, I'll read them. So Esther Tucker served as the facilitator, uh, Pastor Dr. Cedric Belcher from the Grace Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church, Crystal Hernandez from the Hispanic Women's Network of Texas. We had LULAC members, um, Phil, Felix Alvarado and Alberto Govia. Um, we had the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, the Fort Worth chapter, Estella Williams, the president served. We had Felipe Gutez, who was from One Safe Place, excuse me. <clears throat> we had Pamela Young from the Tarrant County Coalition for Community Oversight. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, we had representatives from both the city attorney's office, from the city attorney's office, uh, my department, as well as the police department. The, our first meeting was December 31st, New Year's of 2020. Um, the initial plan was that the group would meet for approximately 90 days because it was an ad hoc uh, work group and that we would meet bi-weekly. And we, we stuck to that, that stance, but we realized early on that we needed more time because there were a lot of considerations that we needed to get through. There was a lot of very uh, a great discussion that was occurring. So we didn't want to stop that discussion. Um, and so we continued forward past the 90 day mark and, and took it all the way through the end of July, um, meeting on what a proposed board would look like. And the guiding principles of our discussions um, uh, was collaboration, oversight, and of course, confidentiality. And the ultimate goal for this group was to create the best fit for the city of Fort Worth. So in September 14 of 2021, we uh, took an informal report um, from the city manager to council that really kind of laid out the proposed board recommendation to the mayor of council. So they were first informed about what that recommendation looked like. Then I also met with each and every council member prior to that to discuss what the recommendation looked like. And then we did a presentation to the city council and the mayor on September 21st, 2021. Now those considerations that we looked at um, were considerations that you think of when you're creating a, a civilian oversight board or any really any, any type of board. You wanna look at what the mission is, what the overall purpose is, what the duties of the board would be, uh, what the type of the board is. Is it a governing board, is it an advisory board, the name, who would appoint and who had the removal authority what the appointment term would look like, how many members and what types of appointees, did they have, any, have to have any type of expertise? Um, the appointment process, so did they have to go through background checks? Uh, do we, are we gonna require residency, age? Um, and then are, was there any requisite experience that was necessary? And then we looked at whether training would be necessary for the board and any type of meeting requirements and who would basically support the board, uh, administer its operations and so forth. So we started off, uh, next slide, with the purpose. And so the purpose um, the work group decided would be to collaborate with our office and PD to develop a more transparent police department through a review of and recommendations to Fort Worth's uh, police policies, practices, and procedures. The objective, of course, would be to listen to and promote the community's voice, because this is a board of community members, and policing and public safety by ensuring fairness and equity and police policies, procedures, and practices. And the key duties would be to review and become familiar with uh, PD's policies and procedures, to gather, evaluate, discuss, analyze information relevant to 
recommending changes to policies and procedures when needed, or confirming that specific policies and procedures were acceptable, and then identify any policing issues suitable for further review. So any policy implications um, for further review that um, needed to be discussed. This board would those that would be the board's duties. The board type, it would be a volunteer board, it would be advisory. Um, and the name that the work group came up with was the Community Police Oversight and Accountability Board. Um, they agreed uh, through consensus that the city council would appoint and confirm all the members of the board um, and that the city council could remove per majority a uh, vote uh, recommendation of the board itself. And then the board would of course select its own chairperson and adopt any bylaws or standing operating procedures um, that it's so, uh, so saw fit. Uh, the work group um, agreed that there should, it should be a two year, two term uh, appointment. Um, the initial appointments of certain members should be staggered. A certain number of members should be staggered where um, their initial appointment would be for one year and their second term would be for a two year. So therefore you wouldn't have everybody coming off and leaving the board at the same time. Um, the, one of the, the key uh, ish, uh, uh, concerns that I brought up to the work group and they all agreed was that we wanted to make sure that this community group was represented by diverse community perspectives. And this is a trend that we've seen in civilian oversight. Originally when civilian oversight was created, various members would be put on whoever the appointment authority was. The person may or may not have an interest in law enforcement, but was interested in serving on the board. And so um, there weren't necessarily criteria per se. And so we're seeing more and more because of the importance of civilian oversight and the impartiality and the various views around policing, we're seeing more and more that actually who the perspectives that our members represent is very important. And so our working group decided that they wanted this board to be representative of various uh, community perspectives. And that included the areas of civil rights, mental health, disability, immigration, homelessness, LGBTQ, the legal education field, and a, particularly our marginalized communities. So incarcerated, a, a, perspective, a, a person from that has been incarcerated, a, you wanted that perspective. You also wanted the perspective of diverse racial and ethnic communities, because those are the communities that are most impacted by police. Um, they also agreed that if, uh, PD's personnel could not serve on the board and their immediate family members could not serve on the board. And they ultimately agreed that the number of board appointees should be nine members appointed by council and the mayor with up to three to five recommended to council by our office. Now that was only conditional if we didn't have the various perspectives represented. So after the council appointees, for example, we didn't have anybody that had the, a perspective from the homelessness community, then OPOM could make a recommendation to council as to maybe some individuals that would satisfy that criteria. Um, so ultimately the maximum number of appointees would be 15, does not have to be 15 if all those perspectives are represented and that 15 also took into account the two additional council seats that potentially the city would have. So from nine to 11. Um, the work group decided that they wanted all members to be city of Fort Worth residents, that there would be a background check, a criminal check for um, of the appointees. And um, there was no consensus reached on whether the appointees um, could be appointed if they had felony convictions. Um, so they're really leaving that in the council's hands because we could not reach consensus, which doesn't mean they didn't support it. There were members who supported it. However, they couldn't reach a consensus of what that looked like. Should there be a time length on how, how old the felony conviction was? Should it be that certain felony convictions couldn't serve? For example, a rapist or someone who was convicted of pedophilia. So it wasn't that they, um, the, the work group thought that folks with felonies could not serve on the board. They just couldn't reach a consensus on what that exactly looked like. And then they all agreed that members must um, be uh, 
uh, at least 18 years of age, and that there should be initial and biannual training of our members, um, including courses at the police academy, and that all members also uh, execute and agree to a standard of professional conduct agreement, which really just talked about them being ethical, impartial, um, as well as not talking to the media and things like that. At a minimum, the work group wanted the board to meet quarterly. Um, they also wanted the board to consider um, the diversity of stakeholders that this board would impact. And so the meeting schedule should represent that. So we have a working class. We wanna make sure that the board's meetings are not always during the day where the working class either couldn't come to the meeting or they couldn't view the meeting. Um, for example. Um, and also just um, the board would follow the traditional city format for all of its boards and commissions as far as documented minutes, because this is this board would be a public entity, so it would be uh, mandated to follow um, the Public uh, Information Act and so forth, and Open Meetings Act. Um, and that uh, OPOM would have to serve as administration for the board, so additional staff, and we know that it would be needed for that. Now, the implications of uh, doing a board like this are great. Um, it identifies potential issues for this board to solve or the opportunity to improve. Um, it was an opportunity to review and input from community members and representative organizations regarding the proposed board. Um, it was a collaboration between our subject matter experts, our city folks, um, practitioners and attorneys to determine the best possible solution. Um, the policy and procedure recommendations um, with stakeholder involvement would be proposed to the chief and the chief would be responsive to the board as it relates to um, the status of those recommendations. Um, and if uh, recommendations were adopted by the chief, um, the next step would be for this board then to review any implementation practices and training. So we have to follow it all the way through. You can't just make the recommendations and say, okay, we're good. Um, this board really should take on the full task of actually looking at implementation once it's put in the general orders for the police department, and then how are our uh, police officers being trained on that new practice? Um, and then, of course, being a public body, uh, the board would then be responsible for periodic updates to the community, to the mayor and council regarding the board's progress, its recommendations, um, and its status. So here's a sample scenario that we came up with. So our office is notified of a complaint. This is a hypothetical. Our office is notified of a complaint regarding an alleged improper pedestrian stop. Um, we monitor uh, internal affairs investigation until completion. So that's what we do now. Um, we then review all records, which may include speaking with complainant, the witnesses and the PD investigator to obtain any further clarification that we need. Again, all of our, that's a, a, again, our current process. Uh, we compose a review memorandum of our observations and recommendation, noting that, and this is a hypothetical, that PD policies and procedures do not address if and how an officer should conduct a proper pedestrian stop based on the facts provided, okay? So that would, be the, that would be the result of our review. So this is all common practice in our office now. So therefore, we recommend a pedestrian stop procedure to PD and we create a draft procedure to share with PD. Um, we review, including this, our observations and recommendations. So, this, so the part of the board would then kick in, this new proposed board would kick in now. So our review, our memorandum, that all that information would then should be shared with the board. Um, and then the board would then review and determine if they agree with our recommendation, if they wanna add to our recommendation, and they may disagree with our recommendation. And so then we have, we compile, we won't just have our report, but we would also have a report from the board as to how they think the police department should move forward in this particular situation. Um, the proposed board can then apply perspectives that may be missing during our internal review. Uh, or they may, again, agree, because we do try, every uh, review we do, we do try to take into account all perspectives 
And we are a very impartial office as it relates to making recommendations to the police department. And so then all of that information would be put together um, and, and provided to the police chief um, for his review and hopefully his acceptance of a new potential policy for the city of Fort Worth on pedestrian stops. And so that, that's a sample scenario of what this whole process could look like. Now, some additional uh, potential board responsibilities could include a reviewing of police programs or at other aspects of police at, um, at a request of council or this office or the community, um, promote awareness of the public complaint process and review, I'm sorry, and receive and review policy complaints by members of the public. So the public could actually write in or show up at a, a board's meeting and file their own policy complaint um, to the board. Um, the board wouldn't have investigative authority. They wouldn't have monitoring authority. Our office would, but they could definitely serve as a venue of receiving these type of complaints. Uh, provide comments to the city on policy, police policy procedures, practices, and programs. Um, foster further understanding between PD and the community and promote our office and PD services and resources. Um, the board could convene its own community conversation separate from our office, separate from PD, and talk about services, programs, policies, procedures, and so forth, uh, as well as issues of public safety here from the community on concerns they may have um, in order to set forth their, uh, uh, how they should move forward in, in program and policy review. Um, they could provide community outreach and education. And then they could also establish their own subcommittees. Um, they focus on established projects and goals that they have set for themselves. So for example, if they wanna do a, a subcommittee on data and trends and look at patterns, they could do that. Um, another committee could be uh, an outreach committee where they would actually do community collaboration sessions like today. Um, and then a program review subcommittee where they would actually look at programs uh, in the, uh, that were established uh, pursuant to the general orders of the police department and make recommendations as it relates to that. So what are the next steps? So the next steps are to, um, go back to council. Um, and we hope to do that um, by before the end of the year. Um, and we want to um, ask the council support, to support the community oversight board. We don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but we that would be uh, supporting, uh, asking for support uh, via a resolution by council. Then we would provide uh, the city attorney's office with then uh, draft an ordinance creating the board. And that draft ordinance would be presented to the mayor and city council and hopefully to the work group and community. community. Uh, it could be vetted and then finalized and ultimately adoption of an ordinance by the mayor and city council creating the first civilian oversight board for the city of Fort Worth. Uh, then our office would collaborate with the city attorney's office and the city, the city secretary's office to address the board requirements that we talked about, the application process and the appointment process. And then we would collaborate with stakeholders like the police department to create the training curriculum um, for the new board incumbent board members. Um, and, and after we have all that into place, all the background work in place, we could start the commencement process of the appointment of board members, including the staggered appointments. Uh, training could take, you know, 90 days. It could take 120 days. So um, um, we would have to allot for some time for that. Um, but ultimately, the board would then establish its own bylaws and, and SOPs. We would coordinate the training and potentially the board can move forward in the spring of 2022 if it's received all of its training. Um, so it'd be spring 2022 or early summer 2020-2022. And so I'll just leave you with this uh, final uh, quote. A law enforcement agency that proactively shares policy information and engages community members in policy development shows its community that the agency is worthy of their confidence and respect and invites them to become a necessary part of the agency's story. 
And that's a quote from Lexapol. All right, Catherine. Okay, I'm actually unmuting. Okay. So just as a reminder, um, this is our fourth session that we have completed and we have one more next Thursday night at 630. Um, it's on our website as well. You can link to this to city calendar if you need that. So um, I know that a couple of you have been at previous sessions. I really strongly encourage you to to share this information with anyone that's in any of your groups, um, friends and family and neighbors, and encourage them to participate on Thursday night if they're interested. If they can't participate live, they're also recorded and available on Fort Worth TV for you to be able to go back and view. This entire presentation is on our website at fortworthtexas.gov slash OPOM, and you can download that and take a look there. And then at the end of it, it really is important that you complete the survey. It's in the chat session. That is a very important, probably the most important thing to us. If you can complete that survey so that we can compile that data and share that with the city manager and council, that would be extremely helpful. We need to know what your feedback is. And we'll also take all the chat questions and answers that were given to those and share that as well. So if you have a question, on any of the material that we've covered today, you can um, put it in the chat. You can text it to me at 682 215 6412. I see a couple of people who have called in. So that phone number again is 682 215 6412. If you'd like to uh, either share your feedback or ask a question, please text that to me right now. And uh, Kim will be happy to answer that for you. Do we have any questions in the chat, Erin? No, we don't. Let's let me just double check and make sure that we don't have anything that's texted. I don't have anything that's being texted. Um, let's see. Just want to make sure that we're not missing anything. And so I don't see anything in the chat session. Um, we really appreciate you being here this this morning. I know it's a beautiful day and you guys are probably just dying to go outside and enjoy that sunshine. If for some reason you have a question after um, we hang up, please just make sure that you email them to us. You have my cell phone. And so you can also, again, send me a text message that way and we that way we can answer you and um, and be able to make it a part of the record that we're trying to keep as well. Um, if if you have any other questions, um, go ahead and put that in the chat. And if not, um, after a minute or so, we're gonna go ahead and, and let you get back to the rest of your afternoon. We really appreciate you being here. Kim, anything else you wanna add? Is being the fast chatter here. I can see her. She's putting everything and anything in the chat I'm section sorry. for you. So. I, um, yeah, any questions or comments, uh, feel free to ask them. If you want to um, not ask them today, but ask them at a later time, of course, you're always welcome to uh, email us. And, and Catherine has that here on the slide. Um, I also put our phone number in the chat, uh, direct number, so you can call at any time uh, and talk to any one of us. Um, and then if you go on our website, um, our website has a comment feature on it where you can click comment and just shoot whatever comments you have um, that you would like to share. And so we welcome that. And it could be related to today's presentation, it could be related to your thoughts on civilian oversight um, for in Fort Worth. It could be related to uh, policing. Um, you know, anything, it doesn't have to be related to our discussion today. Um, we're always uh, willing and open to hear from you uh, at any time. Um, so please feel free to contact our office uh, any through any mechanism that is best for you. Yes, and I, I do want to remind everyone, if you go to our website, all of, uh, we have a brochure, we have a flyer that details the complaint process. 
Our card is there that you can uh, you can download and print any of that material if you want that to share with with friends and neighbors. If you want to printed versions of any of that information for any organization that you are, are with, please just call or email our office and we will be more than happy to uh, get you copies of that so that you can share it. Um, we have a business card that gives our office contact number that you can share with others um, if they ever want to submit a complaint or a commendation. That's a great way to make sure that people have that information handy. Um, it looks like there was a, a comment from Larry Crockett. Um, Mr. Crockett, I'm going to um, so, let you. So, be, so it'll be the first, I can answer. So the first point of contact, it could be either us or PD. Um, we, we communicate with each other. Um, so we can take the complaint directly. And what we do is we document the complaint um, and then we will send the complaint over to PD to investigate it. And then we monitor the investigation uh, as they're investigating it. Uh, and then when they reach a final resolution, they share that with us. We mont and we look at that and determine if 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 the the investigation was diligent um, and if we agree with it, if we don't agree with it, if we have further recommendations as it relates to the investigation, we do all of that on our end. So we like for community members to contact us regarding complaints and then let us handle it. But you're always welcome to go to PD. And if you go to PD, then we also are notified when you file the your complaint with them and uh, we can still monitor it as well that way uh, too uh, so either one whichever uh, whichever folks feel comfortable with we want to make sure that our community members if they have concerns about policing um, that they know that if they don't feel comfortable with going to PE that our office is always here to hear their uh, concerns and like I said, we also take commendations. So it's not always a bad story. Sometimes they're good stories too. So we will take the, the, the good and the bad as it relates to um, um, law enforcement here in Fort Worth. And no problem, Mr. Crockett. I, I, I understood what you were talking about. Um, the one thing uh, Catherine mentioned is our partnership with uh, Texas uh, Law A&M. And so I know we did a Steer Fort Worth event a couple months ago and someone asked me about TCU. Are we partnering with TCU? So I did. I put it in the chat, but I did want folks to know that we are um, partnering with TCU, and we're going to have some interns from TCU in the spring of 2022 in our office working as well. And I'll I'll pick on um, Mr. Crockett because he's he's with Como NAC as well. And so, um, Mr. Crockett, if you ever want us to come out and and share a presentation similar to this, or be able to ask ask and answer questions of, of the NAC, please give us a call, shoot us an email. We'd be more than happy to come and join you and Miss Ella. Um, we want to try to get out into the community as I know you will, see? <laughs> so, <laughs> we appreciate that. And that, that's what we want to do. We will come and visit any neighborhood association, um, any organization. If, if you got two people together, we'll come out and talk. We want to be able to to, to have a presence in the community. Um, that way, if you have a question, we, we'll, we'll figure out the answer with you. We wanna be able to help you as much as we can. Um, are there any other questions or comments? Hey. We just, again, really wanna thank everyone for, for being with us this afternoon. Uh, it's lunchtime now, so y'all can start thinking about that. If there's if there's anything we can do for you, you've got our email address, our phone numbers, our website. If there's anything that we can do to improve um, any, any of the communication that we're doing, please let us know. Again, this is being recorded on the city's Fort Worth TV and it should be up within the next few hours. Um, so you can share the that information with any of your friends and neighbors who happen to have missed it. And we have one more of these um, on Thursday at 630. And it'll be, um, if you go to our website, the link is there for so that you can log in directly or you can also go to Fort Worth TV and watch it live. Kim? Oh, no, I was just going to say that make sure you tell them when the next one is. 
So thank you everybody for coming. I'm not going to hold you any longer. Have a great afternoon and be safe. Thank you everybody. Thank you.